a sixth generation fighter is the next generation. We currently define the leading edge fighters, the F-22, the F-35 as fifth generation, the Typhoon, the Rafale, aircraft like that as fourth generation. So the sixth generation is looking to be that next generation and bring with it a significant leap in capability, in particular in areas such as stealth, range, pay, internal payload. Of course, stealth aircraft have to carry their ordnance internally to maintain stealth, although podded external pods for uh, weapons carriage are uh, feasible as well as bringing in next generation sensors so much improved radars electronic warfare systems and bring in new technologies so artificial intelligence and machine learning and collaboration with uncrewed platforms what's also known as manned unmanned teaming and looking at the development of their what are called uh, loyal wingmen so you'd have your crewed fighter operating alongside uncrewed aircraft AI would look to assist the pilot in terms of the overall picture of the battle space that these aircraft will be operating in already something like the F-35 has tremendous uh, computing power and its sensors are hoovering up a vast amount and sixth generation aircraft will build upon that and the vast amounts of data that these aircraft would be gathering whilst operating within the battle space. AI would look to enhance how that data is processed and bring it to the pilot as well as using AI for example in AI enabled weapons such as the MBDA Orca Strike. So you have smart weapons which can commu communicate with each other within the battle space and they can adapt in flight their targeting their routing so it's bringing in a quantum leap in performance in what your aircraft can do in how weapons integrate and how aircraft both crewed and uncrewed operate together and with wider assets A sixth generation crewed aircraft is going to be very expensive and even as the United States is discovering it's not affordable to deploy these in numbers. Uh, the US Air Force has previously talked about looking at around 200 crewed next generation air dominance fighters but the loyal wingmen are designed and intended to be much more affordable so you can restore mass. So where you're looking at 200 crewed NGAD, you'd be looking at a thousand uh, collaborative combat aircraft, what the Americans term their loyal wingmen, and they would operate alongside NGAD and the F-35. The Royal Air Force is looking at uh, autonomous collaborative platforms, so the term given to loyal wingmen in the UK, again to restore mass and provide extra airframes which can do a variety of roles. The Australians are developing the MQ-28 Ghost Bat, which was the one of the first real Loyal Wingmen concepts to come to the fore. And uh, certainly under the uh, UK's autonomous uh, collaborative platform strategy, it's looking at you know bringing these into service by around 2030. And the United States Air Force is uh, pursuing similar similar efforts. I think developing the the technology, the interfaces, the whole, all, all the tactics, techniques, and procedures around having collaboration, close collaboration between crewed and uncrewed assets, working all that out. That's probably going to be the the biggest challenge because it is quite a radical shift in how air operations are conducted. And uh, AI, of course, is seen as a, a great enabler there to help facilitate that process. But it, it's something that's going to require experimentation and uh, a, a lot of a lot of development.
for the most part, there's always going to be a human either in the loop or on the loop. Other countries, Russia, for example, uh, may view things differently and allow autonomous uh, platforms to engage. But I would think that Western countries will keep things much more with a, with a human involved in decision making. Human involved in decision making. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.